AIs today are like very small children. How do we how do we grow them up? How do we give them experience about the world? And I think one of the coolest data sets of experience about the world is the driving data set. So as a company, you know, I talk high-minded, I talk about ideas, but I'm very grounded. We actually want to ship a product by the end of the year that people will be able to install in their own cars and it will give them more self-driving capability than that's in the Tesla today. There's a lot of jokers and then there's Google and Tesla. That's autonomy. We think that we are better than Tesla and targeting a different product segment than Google. So Google's approach fundamentally, uh, every street they want to drive on has to be driven with not one but two special Google self-driving mapping cars, and that's really going to limit rollout. Um, then you have a lot of other players. You have Lyft, who just raised a billion dollars, and they have nothing. They have, they have nothing. Um, you have Cruise Automation, who I think's got some real, uh, they just crashed into a Prius. Like, our car, the demo we're gonna show you later today, our car's not even capable of crashing into something at low speeds. It will stop. We're gonna turn on the cruise control, and we're gonna accelerate at that cone over there, and then from the passenger seat, I'm gonna touch nothing, and the car's gonna break. Every time we go out and take the car, we log all the sensors and all the things that happened during the ride, and we can reconstruct that um, from the past and see um, what our machine learning technology is doing with that data. So here you can kind of see the car driving, right? And you can see a whole bunch of different machine learning algorithms. See here, you'll see a whole bunch of different colors here, telling the car what to do. So the camera is largely used for steering. Right now the steering, you okay. can see by that red, it's very confused yes. because it doesn't know how to drive in parking lots. It only knows how to drive on highways yes. right now. Right. Come here, car. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. There it is. Come on. Come on. Stop. Slow down. Don't hit me. Good car. So our systems, by the way, are never going to override the human driver. You are capable at all times of grabbing the wheel, hitting the brakes, hitting the gas, and the car will respond and our system will disengage right away. We're not trying to override people. So the way we get people to trust us is slowly. Put the system in your car. Turn it on for a minute. Hey, hey, that was pretty good. Turn it on for two minutes. Turn it on for four, and then eventually we'll build up trust. But there's, there's no other way to do it. At first, it's only going to be a highway uh, cruise, but highway cruise, people like driving on the highway, you can do it pretty effortlessly. The real killer app is traffic. Uh, if we could get a system that could navigate smoothly through traffic without you having to do anything, I think that's a huge hit. Who doesn't want to drive? I mean, who wants to drive in traffic? Nobody. It's, it's terrible. It's stressful. You can't do anything else. You always have to pay attention. You always got to inch forward. The car should do that for you. On this test car, we like to show you wires, right? Wires look cool. On the final product, no wires. It's going to be a small, sleek-looking box, or maybe even something smaller and more sleek-looking, that'll mount right up on your windshield. I'm not going to say whether I think I'm good or not. I'll leave it to the world to decide. If I ship a lot of products, if I make a lot of money, if I build something really awesome, I guess I was a good CEO. If I don't, I guess I wasn't.